Now to Concorde's last flight. BA flight 002 from New York touched down at just after four this afternoon. It was the last of three Concords to land at Heathrow today, ending one of the most glittering achievements in aviation history, supersonic passenger travel. At the airport, there were cheers, tears, and of course, that familiar deafening roar. Now more from our correspondent, Daniel Bircher. Taking off into a New York sunrise, BA-002, the last supersonic passenger flight to cross the Atlantic. Lifting into the skies with its characteristic elegance and the distinctive roar of the engines, there is no other aircraft like this. There will probably never be another aircraft like this, and so it marks the end of an extraordinary chapter in aviation history. So one last time, Concorde picks up pace to break the sound barrier. Speed has always been the big selling point. And the flight crew today making good time too. Progress monitored on the ground in London. Speedboat Concorde 2, Roger. Report the conditions of your flight over the Atlantic today. Uh, the conditions over the Atlantic have, has been normal for Concorde, Concorde, perfect. There's been nil turbulence. It's been a very, very comfortable and enjoyable flight for everybody. Perfect conditions too for those waiting at London's Heathrow Airport and this was the reward for their patience. First one Concorde, then another, a sight never seen before, three in all waiting to land. Within minutes of each other they touched down, the first ending a round Britain celebration tour, the next returning from a final flight across the Bay of Biscay. And then at five minutes past four, BA-002 from New York. So Concorde bows out in style. After almost three decades in service, an aircraft that has enthralled its many admirers for so long, taxis home one last time. From its distinctive cockpit, the pilots fly the Union flag. A poignant moment, the entire Concorde fleet now back on the ground where they will stay. This is an aircraft that has always been the preserve of the rich, the famous or the lucky, but its appeal has been universal, its demise now felt far beyond those who've had the privilege of being on board. Daniel Bircher, BBC News. Well, that was the drama on the ground and one of those very privileged to be on board that last flight was Jeremy Byrne and he joins us now live from Heathrow. Jeremy, what was it like? Sophie, it was absolutely superb. What do you expect? I mean, it was Concorde, for goodness sake. It's such a shame that there isn't a replacement for Concorde to uh, take it into the 21st century. There was a real sense of excitement on board, too. I think even the most blasé, frequent flyer felt the, the excitement of the moment today. And let's not forget, speed is what it's all about. It's a beautiful machine, a fantastic technological achievement, a commercial uh, flop in, in some ways, in early in its career, certainly. But the, the thing about Concorde is that it just goes so fast. It took us just over three hours to get over from New York. Normally, in a subsonic plane, it takes nearly eight. We be, people have been able to fly like that, if they've had the money and the inclination, since the 1970s. And from today, they're not going to be able to. Jeremy, thank you very much. Wonderful scenes there at Heathrow today. For more than a quarter of a century, Concorde has been the most spectacular plane in the skies. But, as David Shookman now tells us, a slump in business plus that terrible crash in Paris three years ago meant there was no future for the airliner favoured by the rich and famous. Rotate any second. Nose wheel well up. Smooth rotation continuing. 1969 and the moment of truth. Will the futuristic technology actually work? Will the Anglo-French partnership hold together? Will this beautiful vision make business sense? She flies. Concorde flies at last. Concords were soon dispatched all over the world. A massive sales drive. At one point, 70 of the planes were on order. But with the supersonic speed came the sonic boom, and country after country said no to allowing it in. Soon you'll be able to travel a mile every three seconds. Eventually, British Airways and Air France were given the planes. The first BA flight to Bahrain, a grand occasion. The champagne flowed amid optimistic talk of a new era. 
in the end, there was only one destination, New York. And over the years, it did start to pay. Until this. Just over three years ago, disaster in Paris, a fire on takeoff. This Concorde on charter carrying German tourists. Nobody survived the crash. The planes did fly again after a costly refit, but terrorism and recession took their toll. Concorde was always the ultimate aviation dream, never practical, but always inspiring. So although the fate of the last remaining planes is to end up in museums, their appeal is guaranteed. Long after today, Concorde's popularity will live on. David Shookman, BBC News. Well, the great and the good have flown Concorde over the years, but few have actually sat at the controls. Well, one who has is the Duke of Edinburgh, and he says Concorde is something we should all be proud of. It was a remarkable achievement, and, it, and I think it, it was in the, in the tradition of some of the really great engineering triumphs of, of people, uh, engineers and designers in this country. The Duke of Edinburgh with his memories of Concord. Now, although many were proud of its revolutionary design, as the last two came into land at Heathrow, there was disappointment as well. Richard Branson has been among those pleading for Concord to be saved. It's the greatest ambassador for Britain that there is. Um, and, you know, what absolutely baffles me is that the British government has not um, got involved to try to keep it flying. Richard Branson there. Well, thousands of people thronged around Heathrow Airport this afternoon to see today's final landings with mixed thoughts about the end of an era. Still modern thing to look at. If you look at the aircraft around, you'll think it was designed like now, but it's like 40, 50 years old. And it's just, it's more than an aeroplane. It captures the imagination of the British. 27 years later, your head still turns to look at it. We've seen the two go out today. Absolutely wonderful. Waving our flags up yes. in Stanmore Moor. <laughs> We're absolutely proud of it. Absolutely. My husband proposed to me on Concorde. My husband got down on one knee and I was on the engineer's lap because there's nowhere else for me to go. <laughs> yes, I said yes. I just love airplanes. And there's not going to be anything like Concord again, is there? Never. It's so sad. Well, the thoughts of just some of the people who were there for today's final flight of Concord. 15,000 asylum seeker families are to be allowed to stay indefinitely in Britain. The government's